okay guys welcome to another video and today we will be discussing about the mechanism of hormone action and it will basically covers the receptors understanding receptor will not only help you understand physiology well but it will also help you in biochemistry pharmacology and pathology so without any delay let's get started so first you have to know that what are receptors so the receptors are macromolecule which binds with particular ligand and it undergoes biological changes in our body so receptors they are macromolecules and they bind to a specific type of ligand binds to a specific type of ligand okay and after binding they will create some biological changes in our body and creates or rather you can say it undergoes biological changes in our body Okay, you need to keep in mind one more thing that many drugs and chemicals also bind to plasma protein of the cell membrane, but we cannot classify them under receptor because they don't undergo any kind of biological changes in our body. So plasma proteins are not considered as receptors. They bind to specific drugs or chemicals but are not considered as as receptors okay so we have said that receptor bind with ligand so we should also know that what are ligands so we'll talk about ligands ligands are actually uh, hormones and they can be other chemicals such as neurotransmitter neurotransmitters they can be certain toxins and they can be other chemicals and ligands are basically of two types they are usually large they have large molecular weight and another class have small molecular weight so they are classified into two types they have large molecular weight and another category of ligand have small molecular weight okay the large molecular weight uh, are for example they are peptides and catecholamines and they are also highly polarized you need to keep in mind they are highly polarized and whereas the small molecular weight ligands are either they are lipid soluble or they are neutral so the ligands which have large molecular weight their receptor must be present outside the cell that is extracellular and the ligands that are present and the ligand that are have that have small molecular weight their receptors should present inside the cell or intracellular so receptors also they have different types either they are they have extracellular and the small molecular weight ligands are intracellular now moving on to examples of large molecular weight ligand and small molecular weight ligand 
we'll specify our example to only hormone because we'll, we are concerned about this chapter endocrine physiology so their examples are for large molecular weight they can be peptides as we said and uh, peptide hormones like FSH, LH, insulin and there can be prolactin and also acetylcholine and many things and under small molecular weight ligands they can be testosterone and progesterone they can also be estrogen vitamin D this is also under small molecular weight ligands because they vitamin D receptors are present intracellularly not extracellularly okay so now we will discuss about receptors receptors are basically three types let me draw one cell this is the cell membrane and I, I will show three types of receptor over here number one there is a type of receptor first we will discuss about the extracellular receptor this receptor has a ligand binding domain and it passes through the cell membrane seven times let me show you one two three four five six and seven times and it has the intracellular effector domain inside the cell since this receptor passes seven times this is also known as seven pass receptor this receptor is also known as serpentine receptor because it looks like snake and these receptors are often coupled with G proteins the most important part of today's lecture these receptors are coupled with G proteins and G protein has three component that is the alpha part the beta and the gamma subunits so it is a trimeric protein G protein is a trimeric protein and this name of the protein is G protein and this is the hormone binding site or the ligand binding site so overall this is this receptor is also named as G protein coupled receptor G protein coupled receptor okay then for uh, okay now let's move on to examples of this so the examples will be acetylcholine mediated muscarinic receptor acetylcholine mediated muscarinic receptor another example is of prostaglandins then histamine then TSH all these come under G protein coupled receptor or 7 pass receptor or serpentine receptor the next class of receptor are 1 pass receptor because they pass the cell membrane only one time so these are known as 1 pass receptor this is the ligand binding side and this is the intracellular effector domain side okay and do remember that the one pass receptors are enzyme link receptor they are enzyme linked receptor okay and basically in hormones we will not discuss about this receptor our discussion will remain confined only to G protein coupled receptors there is one more type of receptor which is known as ion channel receptors 
and they are and they consist of peptides this is an ion channel they consist of peptides and ions flows from here an example is nicotinic mediated or nicotinic receptors of acetylcholine are ion mediated receptors okay nicotinic receptor they are acetylcholine mediated and basically these ion channels are ligand operated they are ligand operated okay so these are the three types of receptor but our discussion will remain confined to only g protein coupled receptor okay so let's start with g protein coupled receptors or serpentine receptors or seven pass receptor so as you know it has a receptor binding that is the ligand binding domain and an intracellular effector domain for example a ligand or an hormone epinephrine binds to it we'll see how the action will take place this is epinephrine when epinephrine binds to the receptor side the intracellular part undergoes certain changes and it activates the g protein g protein during its inactivated uh, state the alpha subunit is bound with gdp when signal comes it be, uh, it gets activated and it throws away this gdp unit and takes up g tp unit and after taking the gtp unit the alpha subunit of the g protein gets separated from its counterpart that is the beta and the gamma subunits so it's get divided into two parts the alpha we are talking about g stimulatory protein so it will be alpha stimulatory beta stimulatory and gamma stimulatory the alpha subunit or the alpha stimulatory part will take up the gtp gtp and it will say goodbye to its part that is the beta and the gamma stimulatory part they will get separated and this activated alpha stimulatory part will go to a special protein which is known as adenylyl cyclase this protein is bound to the membrane of the cell and it has a receptor site for the alpha stimulatory protein and this alpha stimulatory subunit will bind will bind to the receptor site of adenylyl cyclase and adenylyl cyclase will get activated and when this adenylyl cyclase get activated it converts atp into cyclic amp or cyclic amp so what happens the cyclic amp level in cell it gets raised up in several times and this cyclic amp will undergo certain will help in undergoing certain changes like it will activate protein kinase a it can activate this is inactive protein kinase a it will activate it into active protein kinase a this cyclic amp why we will say it is protein kinase a because adenyl cyclase is involved over here so it's protein kinase a this protein kinase a can undergo or it can helps in phosphorylation of certain proteins certain enzymes and it can also phosphorylate 
uh, ion channels so the cell goes under metabolism it shows various cellular response like this active protein kinase A this is enzyme it phosphorylates it the phosphorylated enzyme and it can also phosphorylate certain proteins it gets phosphorylated phosphorylated proteins and it can also open the ion channels suppose this is the cell the cell continues just a schematic diagram this is the ion channels or rather we will say it's a calcium uh, channel so this phosphorylates this calcium channel and there will be influx of calcium into the cell calcium uh, is present in abundant amount in outside the cell or the extracellular amount of calcium is very high as compared to the intracellular amount so it will help in phosphorylation of ion channels it will phosphorylate certain proteins it will phosphorylate enzymes and all these together will bring about cellular response so like this way the G protein will help in stimulation of certain things like adenyl cyclase it will activate cyclic AMP the cyclic AMP will in turn activate the inactive protein kinase A into active protein kinase A this active protein kinase A will help in stimulation of certain enzymes, phosphorylation of enzymes, phosphorylation of proteins, phosphorylation of ion channels and so on. Now, in the next video, we will talk about uh, G inhibitory protein and also there is another type of G protein which is known as GQ protein. So, thanks for watching this. Until next time guys.